for another day to learn more things on this channel. I believe that from last uh, time's episode, you can agree that what the Lord said or taught the disciples in the Lord's prayer were not just words. It is funny that some people go to church and they will just recite those words where the pastors are even lodge members or occult people. It's a shame. If you, are, if you listen to this, you go to church and you begin to recite the words. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. And you come to the point when then you say the kingdom and the glory, the power belong to you forever and ever. If you say that, you say, what did you say? You said power belongs to him forever. And you say you are a, a man of God and you are a lodge member. You don't understand what you are doing. No wonder some of these churches, they have written in front of them society. You check. They don't write church. Oh. They have writ written the word society. It means it's a society. They have turned it into a society. But if you really believe what you read, in the Lord's Prayer of Matthew chapter 6, God was telling us some deep things that you need to understand that all power belong to God forever. With or without coronavirus. Coronavirus will face out. Power still belongs to God. That is why if you call yourself a Christian, you need to believe that God has power to stop every pandemic. Let me show you something in John chapter 11 as I continue from where I left off in last time's episode. John chapter 11. After Lazarus the friend of Jesus died and the Lord came back to Bethany. The Lord went to the tomb with Martha, a sister of Lazarus. And when they were going there the Lord wanted to demonstrate the power of God to Mary and Martha who had lost their brother. So when they got to the tomb, as I said last time, that the Lord spoke and Lazarus came to stand in front of the tomb. And then he said, lose him and let him go. Before that happened, let me show you the attitude of Martha in John chapter 11, verse 39 and 40. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead for four days. Verse 40 says, Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you will see the glory of God? Hallelujah. So let me go back to continue from where I left off in last episode. I was talking about the fact that because we don't know God, demons have pushed people not to accept that all power belongs to God. We don't accept that. Even true Christians don't accept that. Some Christians are behaving like Martha. They are behaving just like Martha. Initially, if you read John chapter 11, she said, I believe that my brother will rise again. She thought she was speaking about a future event. But the Lord said, go and show me where you have laid it. They came to the tomb and the Lord said, remove the stone. Verse 39 of John chapter 11, Martha was saying that if we remove the stone, there will be a stench. Because he has been dead for four days. And the Lord said, didn't I tell you? If you want to see the glory of God, remove the stone. If you say you believe. Eh? So what I want to tell Christians around the world is that. If you say that you believe in the Lord's prayer. I'm talking about the Orthodox churches. You go to church and you, 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 you just recite the Lord's prayer. If you truly believe in the Lord's prayer. That all power belong to God forever and ever then this is what God says I should tell you Martha 
believed that Lazarus will rise again. And the Lord said, go and show me where you have laid him. They came to the tomb and Martha was arguing with the Lord concerning a stone. The Lord said, if you say you believe, then remove the stone. This is how Martha was behaving. Lord, I believe that you can heal. I believe that you can heal me from the virus and I'm in your presence. Then the Lord said, so you believe that I can heal you from the presence? Why, are you, why have you covered your mouth in my presence? Remove the thing. If you believe, remove this. So all the pastors who are in the church and you have covered your mouths, God is telling you, if you believe in me, that I can heal you. Remove this, this. God doesn't need a nose mask, okay? If you believe that God can heal you from a virus, why have you covered your mouth and your nose? Why? Remove it and see the glory of God. That's why the Lord asked Martha again, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So if you believe that God can heal you according to your faith, remove the nose mask, okay? I told you that in God's kingdom, he doesn't need a medical doctor to toss him around. But in the earthly kingdom, a man called a medical doctor is tossing presidents here and there. God doesn't need a nose mask. I told you that some Christians are using the word, the battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord. Some politicians are using that word in Ghana. And I said that before David said that in, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 47, David said, God doesn't need a spear to save his people, to deliver his people from Goliath. So if you say the battle is the Lord's, remove the nose mask, okay? If you say the battle is the Lord's, but you cover your nose, you are behaving like Martha. You don't believe in God. If you believe, remove the nose mask. Truly, when Martha removed the nose mask, Lazarus, who was dead for four days, came back to life. I'm here to tell you that if you remove your nose mask, God Almighty will prevent any virus from entering your body. Hallelujah. If you believe what I'm sharing with you right now, remove the nose mask in faith, and my God is able to heal you. That is why he has called me as a preacher. He doesn't lie. He is still healing his people. I will be ashamed as a man of God if I came to church to preach like this. I will be ashamed to do this. So last time, the Lord asked me to ask all the pastors who have been in his presence by covering your face. The Lord said I should ask you in the midst of the service of then the Lord said, I should ask you, why have you covered your faces in my presence? Then you go, oh Lord, I'm covering my face because I want to protect myself. Because the medical doctor and the presidents are saying, there is a virus killing people. So if I don't do that, I might be catching the virus. Then the Lord will ask you again. So you believe that in my presence, this can protect you and not me? Can this protect you and not me? I've seen the shame of Christians. Shame of Christians. We don't believe what we read. We are behaving just like Martha. But. There are the people who say, ah, I believe but. I believe but. You know, we have to take precautions. <laughs> God is there but. Listen, in the kingdom of God, there are no bat shoots and coots and maybe there. Eh? We don't have bat shoot, could or maybe. We don't have that. We only believe that God can save us. So this is just to add to what I said last time. If you believe in what you said in the Lord's prayer, power belongs to God forever. In this time, demonstrate it. Pastor, demonstrate it. Okay? Show the people that you have power. In your body because God Almighty is in you. If you also wear this, you and your church members, all of you don't know God. But if you know God, ascribe glory to him forever. Amen. Okay. I'm still at the same point of Matthew chapter 6. So let's go there again. 
Today, I still want to hammer on another word in the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 6 verse 13. The last sentence says, Yours is the kingdom and the power. That's what I just spoke about. The last one is, and the glory. So today, I want to talk about the glory. And the glory. What the Lord wanted his people to understand is that all glory belong to God. What we call glory belong to God forever. You see, when people don't know God, they don't give him the glory. And by the way, let me take my time to explain what glory is. Why the Lord Jesus said all glory, glory or glory belong to God forever. Let me explain to you why he said that. Glory is a shine amongst the lot for uniqueness. That is my definition of glory. According to the way God Almighty has led me to understand. Glory is a shine amongst the lot for uniqueness. What I mean is that when there is darkness covering around everything. When glory comes in, glory will throw a shine over all the things you see for uniqueness to be seen. So when God's glory comes into something or when glory comes into something, it's just light for visibility or clarity. When glory comes into something, it's just light for visibility or clarity. What I mean is that when glory comes in, you see it clearly that this glory is shining on something. You see, that is why in heaven we don't need any light. Because the glory of God will shine upon everything for you to see God clearly. And the uniqueness of God. That is why in heaven we will not need any human light. Because the glory on God's face will shine and give light. Let me give you further example of glory. As a footballer, when we were playing in those days, people would come to stadium and one particular player would begin to exhibit some skills, some dribbling skills that people would begin to, that will move the crowd for people to go, hey, yeah, oh, yo. Uh-huh. When you see a player like that, can compare such a player to one of the, the, the leading players of our day. I don't want to mention any name to offend anyone. We know, but you can see that there are players who electrifies the field when he is among the team. Then you can understand what I mean by what glory is. What I mean is that that player is shining among the lot. So that player or that footballer has the glory. Now you can understand what glory is. That is what the Lord was teaching us in the prayer that anywhere you go, accept it that glory belong to God forever. Accept it that shine. To shine on something for the thing to be unique. That quality is only God's forever. Hallelujah. Thus, giving glory to God is ascribing every possibility to him that wherever or whatever he comes in, wherever God goes, or whatever uh, we are doing that God comes in, his uniqueness will be seen 
by all, including demons. What I mean is that some things are going on on this earth and you don't seem to see any shine. You don't seem to see that light is shed on anything. When God comes in, you will see the difference. His attribute of glory is seen in Genesis chapter 1. When the earth was without form, God came in. He gave it a form. Hallelujah. That was his glory. He gave it a form and a shape. He designed. That is God's glory. That's what you need to understand. But the sad thing is that because some people don't know God in this way that I've described him, they don't give him the glory. We just recite the Lord's prayer, but we don't understand what glory is. If you talk about glory, glory is equal to God forever. That was what the Lord Jesus wanted to convey. Glory is equal to God forever. Whenever something is vague, wherever something is abstract, wherever things are in bad shape, when God comes in, he comes in with glory to make things shaping out correctly. That is what we call glory. So if you say that glory belongs to God, God is equal to glory. So it is in this time that Christians should give God the glory. If you understand this, Jesus was saying that we should give God the glory in every circumstance. In every circumstance. That when God comes in, this is the glory we Christians should give to God. We should be able to say that when God comes in, all will be well. That is giving him the glory. Then you have to also speak like this. When God comes in, he will solve this easily. If you speak like this, you have given him the glory. And that is what the Lord Jesus wanted Christians to understand. Speak by giving God the glory. But I will come here to explain next time. Because of time. But my message today is simple. If you understand that glory belongs to God, give it to him in every circumstance. He will come in and show that he has glory. He has shine. He will come in with his shine and you will be shocked that when he shines on you, people will see you differently. Hallelujah. Let me use the football match as an example again. When God shines on you in the game, people will see you. People always know that when you are in, you come in with a difference. That is what I want us to understand. In this time of the coronavirus, I will come to continue. If you give God the glory, you agree with me. As Action Power, we always say that with God, all things are possible. God bless you. I will see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you have been enlightened. To hear more, you may subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to see more videos. Pastor Kukudatsi has written a very informative book called How Demons Operate. Grab yourself a copy to know how they operate and know how to liberate yourself from demonic oppression. To stay in contact with us, you can reach us through these details. God bless you.